In this video, what I'm going to show you is one of the easiest ways to get foliage into your games uh, because we want it to be quite low poly. We're not going to sit there and model each individual sort of strand of grass. Uh, what we want to do is use alpha maps and sort of PNGs to create the illusion that there is um, that sort of 3D element to your, to your environment. Uh, you'll see from like other games, so like I said, Mario Kart, where if we zoom into it all, they're, they're, not, actually, they're not actually modeled. Uh, so one of the ways we can do it is, if we load Maya up here, uh, what we can do is create a plane. So you see on the plane, there's not many polygons there, uh, which is great for us, because we want this game to be sort of fast paced and as low poly as possible. Uh, so what we'll do is bring in this plane, um, and then right click, hold it down, uh, assign a new material. Uh, for this, all I'm going to do is create a blend, uh, nice and easy, just a little blend there. Um, you should have your attribute editor so on the right side that pops up. If not, it'll just be down here. Um, or you can click on your plane and control A. Just pop that up. Uh, what we want to do is on the color here, uh, click the little checkerboard icon to load up this uh, create render node tab here. And we want to click file. Then on your attribute editor, you'll see that it comes up here. So another option, uh, I clicked off mine, so what you'll have to do is click back on your plane and you've got this little black square with an arrow in it. Just click that, it takes you to where we need to go. We're going to select that file, uh, click on the file and let me find my image here. So you see I've got an image of a grass. What I've done is I've just got a PNG. Uh, nice easy because it creates all this transparency. You'll see it is transparent through it. Uh, so there you go, that's that. And all that has done is just created the image, put the image onto it, uh, onto that plane, and it's saving as the issue with sort of polygons. Because you could imagine trying to sort of model each individual strand of the grass; it's going to take forever. As you see, that's nice and easy. Uh, so what we can then do is come in and edit it, so we can change the vertices, change where we want them to be. You know, I can come in here, it's time to make it more three D. So I might want to. I like a few vertices, press B for soft selection, so you see it selects more polygons. Uh, if I hold B in a left mouse click, I can uh, select a bit more, so it has more of an effect. You see when I start to move it in, you see it's, it's dragging some of the vertices as well with that soft selection. Uh, if I wasn't to do that, just press B, it creates quite an harsh look. So what you need to do is sort of go with your soft selection, move a few things around, make it look a bit more sort of 3D, like there's a bit more to it. Uh, I'm just quickly moving some things so you can see. Move them, move them around. Create a bit more of a 3D, you see mine's not really any good there. I spent some time actually doing that. So I'm just going to control Z, go back to the beginning. So we just got a flat plane. Um, and then what you what you can do there is just duplicate it, drag it around. You see, now we're getting more of a, a 3D element to it. Do that a couple of times. Let me just make sure I'm holding J in there. Is that moving? Control D to duplicate and then hold J just to snap it to grid. So you see there, that is a nice sort of 3D looking bit of grass. That can then be used sort of further out in your environment as a nice little sort of lump of grass in the background. And it saves on polygons. You know, what we're talking here, polywise sort of faces, we've got 400 faces. If we're to individually model each one of these little sort of planes of grass, you're going to be talking more than 400 faces just for that. Um, you don't need to go into as much detail as what I've done, you know, where I created that sort of cross section, cross section, and then the other four as well. Um, two would be enough, two planes would be enough. You see, if, if I'm in background there, you don't get to lay a difference. You can't speed in the cross, so you're not really going to be paying attention, but you've still got that sort of 3D element to it. Uh, best to do this with PNGs, so you get that transparency. Um, so if you're not with that transparency, you're going to see the full sort of square. Uh, whereas this is just nice and so it looks, it's got a 3D element to it because we can see through it. So then we can export that as a model, turn that into a real engine and just put it in the background. Uh, but that saves your polygons because like I said with these tracks they're going to be low poly. 
Uh, but you're not going to be really adding much detail into them. Um, but you don't want to take that visual element away from your target audience as well. They want to be visually sort of in, attracted to your game and, and emerged into it. So this does that. So then this can be sort of duplicated a few times, dragged around. And as you can't sort of speed in past, you're not really going to tell any difference. But that's one way to do it. Uh, and that's using planes and your, and your maps, your alpha maps. Uh, we'll sort of go more into detail in another video about alpha maps and creating those if you're not able to get a PNG. Um, but that's it for this one.